Welcome back. Cutting edge technologies have revealed vast amounts of new natural gas in the United States. They're located in massive shale formations around the country, and many believe they are a game changer for the U.S. energy picture. Well, now nations around the globe have taken notice. They're trying to harness U.S. expertise to tap into shale formations in their countries. They appear little more than huge rock formations jutting out from the shores of Lake Erie. Gary Lash, geologist and professor at nearby SUNY Fredonia, knows there are a lot more. And sometimes it'll seep out in places uh, along the fractures especially and you can uh, light, get a little bit of a flame going. It's rock like this, known as shale, that holds natural gas in its pores. This formation is what's called an outcrop. Having emerged from the earth over millions of years, most shale sits miles underground. But we're on top of it. We're on top of the Marcellus. Okay. This is part of the but Marcellus Basin. Far below this Lake Erie Beach lies what could be one of the biggest shale formations in the country, called the Marcellus. It stretches for tens of millions of acres below New York, Pennsylvania, and four other states. It was Lash and colleague Terry Engelder, geologist and professor at Penn State, who who in 2007 first officially calculated just how much gas the Marcellus holds. I constructed what we call in science a back of the envelope calculation, which included a number of parameters, aerial extent of the Marcellus, thickness of the Marcellus, porosity, all of these things we could figure out from well logs or some other information. And uh, from that information I sat down and multiplied these numbers out. and. At the end of the day, I said to myself, holy cow, there's a lot of gas here. Engelder needed to be certain his calculations were Pretty accurate, much. so he asked Lash to run his own numbers. He called me and said, you calculate it, see what you come up with. You called him back and said? I said, I said this is the number I'm getting, and then he told me the number he had. And they were similar? And they were quite similar, yeah. It was an amount that far exceeded the 2.7 trillion cubic feet estimate that was out there at the time. There's somewhere between, oh, I don't know, three and five hundred trillion, trillion cubic, cubic feet. We realized that what we had on our hands was a super giant gas field. Similar stories played out at shale formations around the country, at the Barnett Shale in Texas, the Fayetteville in Arkansas, the Haynesville in Louisiana, and more. A total 22 shale plays over 20 states. The most authoritative estimate of U.S. natural gas resources comes from the Potential Gas Committee affiliated with the Colorado School of Mines. The PGC estimates the country's total natural gas resources at 1,836 trillion cubic feet, up more than 50 percent from just four years earlier, with shale making up about a third of potential resources. Adding what are called proved reserves from the Energy Information Administration and total technically recoverable resources top 2,000 trillion cubic feet. That's two with 12 zeros. With U.S. consumption now around 20 trillion cubic feet a year, that is a more than 100-year supply. It's that potential that's drawing natural gas producers like Range Resources, the third biggest U.S. natural gas driller, to shales like the Marcellus. And they're getting to the gas with technology developed in this decade. It takes a few hundred feet for that drill bit to go horizontal, but as we speak, about a mile below our feet, that drill bit is starting to pass into the Marcellus Shale. Range Resources' Matt Pizzarella is describing horizontal drilling, where a drill digs thousands of feet down, then makes a slow turn and drills horizontally into the shale. Range gave Clean Skies News exclusive access to its Orton well site, one of more than 400 wells drilled into the Marcellus. We climbed right onto Range's rig number 254 to witness the technology. We also watched from a control center where engineer Scott Thompson literally steers the drill. So when you turn that to the left, it turns that way? Yeah, whichever way I'm turning it, that's the way it's going. Once dug, another technology kicks in called hydraulic fracturing, where water mixed with sand and chemicals is forced into the well at tremendous pressure, fracturing the shale, allowing the gas to flow out. The water, the sand, and the additives are pumped in the hole at about 9,000 pounds per square inch. And, and at that point, the water then goes into the formation and actually breaks up that rock. It puts almost microscopic fractures about the width of a sheet of paper in the rock. Once that happens, that's what stimulates that gas. The gas follows the path of least resistance into the well bore and then flows for, for several decades afterwards. It started out, everything we did didn't work. 
Several decades earlier, Ranges Ray Walker, vice president of operations here, worked in the conventional natural gas business. He had a front row seat as it turned unconventional. We all laughed about it, thought it was a big joke. It was completely unconventional to anything we've done before. Walker was first approached by Mitchell Energy in 1982. Owner George Mitchell was the first to attempt unconventional drilling in Texas's Barnett Shale, and it took a quarter century to make it work. Today, the Barnett is the largest producing gas field in the country. I give all the credit to George Mitchell because he just absolutely refused to give up and he, he had in his heart that it was going to be a, uh, um, a, a commercial play and it was going to be a game changer and of course he was right. <laughs>